friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we're going to talk about pick and finger techniques. So I've had a lot of questions about those, so that's what we're going to do today. But first, a little pause for the cause. Please subscribe if you've been enjoying the episodes, and if you've uh, been been watching a bunch, and if you uh, feel like supporting the show, well, go down to the description, and there's a link to the Ask Zach web store, and you can pick up a t-shirt or a mug, and I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, pick and finger. Uh, now, of course, like most of you, I was familiar with you know Chet Atkins using a thumb pick and fingers, but I was I'd never seen somebody using a pick with their fingers before, you know, in the in the nineteen eighties. And of course, there were tons of guys that were doing it, but I'd just never seen anyone. Uh, the first time I saw it was a uh, a, a guy a, a guy that that came to uh, my church on Sunday morning and played and his name was Randy Boyd, and he played this, and it just blew my mind. I was like, what was that? I'd never heard anything like that before. It was, uh, it was actually covering a, uh, a tune by The Whites, which is uh, Ricky Skaggs' uh, wife's you know, band. And uh, and yeah, I was I was blown away by that. And immediately after the service was over, you know, I went up to him like a groupie or something at a church, and uh, I was like, "Oh, what were you doing? What were you doing? Please show me." You know, I was probably fourteen or fifteen years old, but he uh, he showed me how to play that kind of working man blues like the. He sat with me for a good uh, 15, 20 minutes. You know, I had probably had an acoustic guitar with me or something like that, trying to play that. And I worked my tail off and finally kind of got that, you know, down where I could play it. Uh, to jump ahead a little bit, um, one thing that I think is very helpful and that's something something I learned from a Danny Gatton video uh, called Licks and Tricks, which is out of print, but you can find it you know, on YouTube or you know, somewhere on the interweb. Um, he took uh, the tune Mystery Train and he was playing it, you know, of course, kind of like I did in the intro. And I'm gonna turn the echo, the slapback echo on, and he's, you know, you know doing that kind of thing. And uh, of course, I love that kind of playing. And in the video, he separated the right hand part from the left hand part. And that made all the difference to me because all of a sudden it was kind of a bite sized portion. So he showed how it was just. And so I worked on that for a while. And then then I could bring in the left hand. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, I learned how to use the delay, how to get that kind of rockabilly delay thing, which I'm using an old Boss DM3 today that I've had forever. And, uh, and uh, this is the repeat. So it's you know pretty fast repeat and uh, and the repeat is pretty loud, uh, and then as far as how many repeats, there's only about like one or two, and uh, that's a key to kind of getting a, a, a rockabilly sound is having that delay set you know where the repeat's pretty loud because it gives it that push. <laughs> Off it sounds like this. <laughs> On. So, you get that. So now, let's take that that, uh, that Danny kind of taught me, and let's take something really simple, uh, and let's separate the right hand from the left hand. So this is, this is what we're gonna play. Now I'm playing you know, on the G through low E string, I'm not playing the high E and B string at all. And, uh, and this is the, the right hand. So 
So again, by separating those two out, that will help you. And just work on the right hand first and then pull in you know, the, uh, the fretting hand and you'll, you'll learn these things. Because a lot of people think playing with pick and fingers is just like, oh, well, you know, it's just too hard or why should I try to do that? Well, it just gives you, you know, more things to hit the strings with and you know, more sounds that you can make. Uh, you know, of course, there's that working man blues thing. That... And, uh, you know, if you just take the right hand. <laughs> that sounds pretty awful, but uh, yeah. And if you're playing working man blues, uh, just play that lick in, the, you know, in kind of the spots where, uh, where there's no vocal. When you just kind of play that, you know, you know, incessantly, it, it kind of it kind of wears it out, and the, the lick is not as cool. So anyway, that's a, a personal uh, aside to guitar players playing working man blues, which I, I love the tune. Okay, so another thing about doing pick and fingers is you're going to have to grow out your nails some, and I know that's going to be weird at first, but uh, yeah, just you know, don't cut you know, these two, you know, nails, and then you're going to need to get a file and you need to kind of shape them some and just kind of keep them rounded. Right now, I don't have much nail on this finger. Not that I'm trying to give you the finger or anything. Uh, just because sometimes, you know, you lose them. Uh, guys that are playing, you know, professionally all the time, which I'm not, you know, I'm working for True Tone and doing these videos and I play around town some and, you know, of course not right now. <laughs> no one's playing gigs right now. But, uh, Guys that are, you know, playing all the time and use pick and fingers, they will get fake nails. And they either do it themselves, uh, you know, with a kit that you can get from, you know, the pharmacy. Or, you know, they'll go to a nail salon and have a professional set put on. But Brent Mason, John Jorgensen, you know, tons of guys go and get, you know, fake nails put on. And if, you're, if that's really part of your technique, and, you know, then that's just kind of part of it. Um, I normally use a Fender Medium, and I use kind of the, the uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to say what I, I tend to call the end, uh, but the rounded end. I use the rounded end most of the time. Right now, um, I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm doing it, so I shouldn't say it that I'm not going to do something. Uh, I'm actually experimenting with this blue chip pick uh, that uh, old Keith Williams uh, gave me and kind of enjoying it which is dangerous because who, you know, it's like a $40 pick. So, but anyway, I'm using it for now. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but I definitely, I like using a pick that doesn't have a point to it. So this pick doesn't have a point. It's all, you know, kind of smooth, uh, you know, you know, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't come to a, a sharp point. So, uh, another thing you need to do is you need to get independence between your pick and fingers. And uh, a great way of doing this is another thing I learned uh, from Danny Gatton, which, uh, yeah, that, that uh, rhythm guitar video is, is amazing. And he does something along these lines, but I'm simplifying it even more. And uh, I'll just play it first. <laughs> And the whole point of this is to get independent. So your, your fingers are doing the and your picks doing the So that's a great exercise for getting independence because your tendency is going to be to want to use use all of them the kind of like they're all activating at the same time. You're going to want to do but the you know, you know so getting it to alternate and getting it to where you you're playing you know eighth notes and quarter notes with one and you know that and play it as slow as you need to and uh, yeah and just you know keep working at it uh, also, you know, you can start getting into, you know, rolling, you know, patterns, you know, both forward and backwards. So that'd be forward. And then the backward is. So 
be another thing to uh, you know to start to work on, and you can you know kind of do like uh, James Burton did on the uh, Mama Tried. He was playing fretted dobro, and and uh, Roy Nichols was playing Italian and did the the bends, you know. <laughs> So uh, you know that's kind of going back and forth between uh, you know a forward roll and a backward roll. So you know slow slow those things down and uh, kind of get those things going. Well, I think that's probably a a good a good place to start. So uh, you know start working on your your pick and finger techniques, and then uh, you know then of course you can get into like the chicken picking thing. <laughs> steel guitar bends and all sorts of things because you get such a different sound when you pluck the strings versus strum them just like you know the difference between or so and you'll find that so many players uh, you know either use pick and fingers or they will palm the pick at times and just use their fingers and it's important to you have all these things at your, at your disposal and uh, you know, learn how to use them, and uh, you know, have more musical tools and musical colors, you know, at your disposal. So, hope you've enjoyed Ask Zach today. I uh, hope you uh, hope you'll uh, get going on some picking fingers, and I hope you have a great week. See you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.